What's up everyone, welcome to Tech Savvy Wire. So today is episode two of modding your Vitas. And I've got a couple of Vitas here sent in from you guys that I'm gonna go ahead and modify and do some cool stuff with and then have it sent back over to you. Before I go ahead and show you what I'm gonna do with it, which is gonna be some pretty cool stuff and I'll give you my justification of why I wanna do some of the things I wanna do with these Vitas. Um, huge shout out to all the Patreons who support this channel. Thank you guys very much. It means a lot to help support the channel. We're getting closer and closer to hitting 100K as we go. So if you guys are new, please hit that subscribe button so you guys can get in on some of this action. Of course, if you guys wanna send your Vitas in to me to modify for you as well, You'd be happy to know that I'll take care of that as well, just like I'm doing here today. So we're gonna go ahead and do a different bunch of things with all these Vitas. I've got one here from Xavier and I think these ones came from Mario. So huge shout out to you guys. Thank you very much for signing up for the high tier and Patreon page. And you know, you'll get your stuff back in great shape as I promise. I'll probably even go the extra mile and clean them up because you guys sent this pretty dirty, <laughs> but it's okay. Anyways, guys, thank you very much as usual for supporting the channel and for being here and watching this content. Um, before we begin, let's just get a word from today's sponsor and then I'll catch you guys up. Today's video is sponsored by GVGmall.com. GVG Mall carries a wide variety of game currencies and gift cards that you could use to take your gaming to the next level. If you're looking for a fresh copy of Windows or Microsoft Office, then you can certainly find those on GVGmall.com as well. They are priced very competitively and offer legit copies of Microsoft software. You can pick up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for under 15 bucks. Visit gvgmall.com for more information and use code TSB to save during checkout. Okay, welcome back guys. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with all three of these Vitas is essentially I'm going to be updating them to 3.73 if they're not already on 3.73. I'm then going to downgrade them to 3.68 and then proceed with adding HUncore. I'm gonna add auto plugin, packages app. I'm gonna add adrenaline to it and retro arch. These are gonna be the base set of apps that I'm going to add into this. Now I've got a special surprise for the one with the LCD screen. So if you send me an LCD Vita, what I'm also gonna do in there is tweak your screen so that your resolution looks more vibrant. A lot of people said that tweak makes it look close to the OLED quality screen, but not exactly. However, it's definitely more saturated and more you know, vibrant colors that you get on the, the screen, even with just the LCD technology here. So I'll do that as a favor for you guys. Typically, I don't really do that. And I'll also make a video separately on how to go ahead and do that. Today's video is not gonna show you how I do what I do, but I'm basically just gonna show you what I do and why I'm choosing to do what I do, if that makes sense. So if you wanna watch my tutorials and you wanna learn how to do this yourself, guys, I've made tons of videos on the PS Vita and how to hack it, how to downgrade it, how to add different apps to it, installing Homebrew. Almost every question you guys ask me in some of the comments of my other videos have already been answered throughout my videos. So please take the time and invest the time like I've invested the time to make these tutorials for you guys to go ahead and do it. So this should be a last resort to send it to me. If you don't have a PC or you're not really understanding it, you're super on tech savvy, then go ahead and send it to me. Otherwise, 90% of the time you guys should be able to do this for yourself and even do it for your friends if someone else doesn't understand how to do it. But anyways, guys, I don't mean to ramble on and make this video long. It's gonna try and keep it short and sweet, but I'm gonna go ahead, do all the stuff with it, and we'll catch up with you guys, and then I'll show you the screens of how everything looks after it's done, and what are all the things inside, and then we'll walk through each one in a little bit of a brief kind of summary of it. So I'll catch you guys right after that. All right, guys, welcome back. So I just finished modifying and installing all the apps and setting up the SDD Vita on all three of these Vitas. So again, huge shout out to Mario for sending me these two Vitas to take care of you and for supporting my channel, I really do appreciate. And also a huge shout out to Xavier for sending me this Vita and letting me take care of that for you while of course supporting my channel. Definitely appreciate it very much guys and hopefully you're gonna enjoy this when you guys get this back. I will be sending it back first thing Monday morning through USPS using the same packaging that you guys sent to me. So now you guys are curious, what did I do with these? Now you've been following my videos for a while and you probably already know some of the things that I like to keep on this. So for starters, all three of these Vitas when they came to me, they were sitting on firmware 3.73. Now the reason I don't like firmware 3.73 being the latest firmware that it is, it has some buggy issues and compatibility issues with some of the different apps that we use with our modified Vitas. So for example, Adrenaline doesn't seem to work well with 3.73. Setting up SD to Vita also does have some compatibility issues at times. It can become a little bit finicky depending on what SD card you're using. So I just prefer to bring it back down to 3.68. 
Now, some of you guys might be curious and said, hey, TSP, you put out a video last week telling us to downgrade to 3.65 and install Enzo on it. Why didn't you do that with these three? And guys, it's really a preference. I personally do not like 3.65. I've always made that clear in all my videos. However, a lot of you guys have asked me to make a video showing you how to install Enzo and you wanted me to do that. So there you go. I went ahead and did that. I'm trying to do stuff that you guys asked me to do. Now, the reason I don't like 3.65 is I don't like to have any kind of permanent modifications. I have a modded switch as well. I don't like to have permanent mods. I don't like doing mod chip stuff. That doesn't mean I don't know how to do it or I won't do it for someone. I just am not a fan of that. I like software stuff only because tomorrow if I want to get rid of that Vita or give it to someone else and I don't want to have any evidence that I've modified it, I can always just flash the firmware or just update it or restore it or do whatever. Now that you can argue that you could do the same thing on 3.65, but you know, I don't really care for the benefit that it really brings, which is just skipping one step of when you reboot your Vita, you just don't have to open up the HN Core app anymore. That's really the only benefit that I see from Enzo. The other things of compatibility stuff that you can do with Enzo running in the background, it really doesn't appear to me but it may to you so again I don't want to turn this into a video of why I chose that and what I didn't so sorry for rambling on there and digressing but basically that was the reason why I decided to go to 3.68. 3.68 has the best compatibility with all the apps it's got the best compatibility with all the games all the homebrew all the different things that you can install on the Vita so 3.68 is my go-to firmware that was the first thing done to all three of these Vitas we downgraded this down to 3.68. Next, I proceeded to go ahead and install H on Core. So that is obviously the software needed to modify the Vita and start installing VPKs or you know the, the code word, let's call it, for the install files for apps that are used on the Vita's firmware. So using H on Core was the way to get us to install different apps. On top of that, obviously Vita Shell is part of having HN Core and Vita Shell is used to connect it to your computer and be able to access any of the stuff that you're doing with your Vita. So if you want to copy and drag and drop files over to your Vita to and from, you need Vita Shell to actually see it because you can't use the proprietary memory card inside your computer, which is kind of unfortunate. So now we have Vita Shell on here, we have HN Core as well. The next thing I did was set up the SD to Vita. So doing this is really simple, guys. It's again, I have tutorials on how to do it. I'm not going to walk through how to do it. But remember, always when you do it, format it correctly and make sure you copy over every file from either your internal or your memory card, whichever one it is that you're going to be mirroring over to it. And also remember, once you have your SD to Vita set up to go into Vita Shell, hit start and make sure that you select your SD to Vita as the option of the, you know, the, the storage, shall I say, sorry, that connects to your computer. Otherwise, every time you plug in with Vita Shell, you're still going to be getting your memory card and not actually actually um, and not actually accessing your SD to Vita. God, I'm having trouble talking today. Anyways, so this is basically the base stuff that you need to have on your Vitas before you decide to do anything else. A couple of the other apps I decided to go ahead and install on them and most for the for most of the part, all three of them have the exact same apps except for the Slims versus the OLED. And I'll talk about that here in a second. So I put Auto Plugin, which is basically a app that allows you to download different kinds of plugins to support different kinds of apps. That gives you access to downloading, you know, LOL Icon, which is also used for overclocking the Vita. So you can actually overclock this and take it up all the way to 555 megahertz speed without, you know, breaking it or crashing it or doing anything. And some games where you see frame drops, and I've personally tested this, if you're running 30 FPS or 60 FPS in certain games and you get frame drops during heavy action scenes, that thing takes it away completely. And a lot of games I've tried. Now, obviously it won't work for every game, but a lot of games it will work for. So if you're playing first person shooters or more heavy demanding titles like Resistance Burning Skies or Killzone, for example, those games would work really, really well with that overclock. Now, I did not install the overclock plugin because I don't want to tamper with anyone's Vita and you know give you guys a reason to get mad at me. So feel free to do that on your own. It's very easy. Just go in there and select it, whatever you want. What I did go ahead and take care of was installing the non-DRM plugin. So that is used for the app called Package or PKGJ or whatever. I always get that one confused on how it spells, kind of annoying. Now, Package, leading onto that's a great segue for it. Package is an app that you use to download DLCs and actual Vita games, PS1 games, PSP games. That is your store, let's call it, to getting game backups. Now, guys, I'm gonna be upfront. 
and very honest, I don't condone you guys to download this, but I, I mean, honestly, if you're modifying a Vita, chances are you're gonna be doing this with it anyway. So I'm only helping you do that, but I'm not actually installing any games for you. So please don't contact me asking me to put emulator games on there, ROMs, any of that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna engage in any of that kind of stuff. Although, you know, it's funny, I teach you guys how to do it, but I'm not gonna do it for you. So I'll just leave that as it is. I leave a disclaimer in all my videos that you shouldn't really be doing it unless you own the game. And even then, make the effort to support developers, don't pirate stuff. So that's the app that you're gonna be using to get your game backups and all that kind of stuff in there. The next app that I've installed on here, as you guys can see, is RetroArch. So RetroArch is your, if you're not familiar with RetroArch and what it is, basically it is your home screen for using emulators. This lets you use Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, MAME, PS1, and pretty much all of the arcade style games that you can think of. So if you wanna play SNES and Sega Genesis games, basically those are the two big ones that I'd say, or Nintendo, NES, for example, RetroArch is the place that you're gonna go and do that. There's a folder created inside each of the Vitas that allows you to just go copy over your ROMs into your PS Vita, and then boom, you're set to go. You just launch it in from there, and there you go. It's gonna launch up really easily. Next I have installed on here is Adrenaline. Now Adrenaline is a PSP emulator. Basically what it does is it makes your entire Vita look and act like a PSP. Once you run it, you're gonna be back into the old school user interface of how PSP used to run. That will give you access to playing PSP games and PS1 games as well. And plus you can go into the settings and tweak some of the different ways that it interacts with the PS1 games specifically. Now, the only drawback of Adrenaline, in my personal opinion, is it doesn't take the full advantage of the PS Vita's hardware to like boost some of the games or get better frame rates and stuff like that. But nonetheless, you can still play all your PSP and PS1 games. So those of you guys who are out there and like, hey, a modded PSP is way better and this and that, we pretty much do the same thing with the Vita. It's pretty awesome. So we've got Adrenaline in there as well. The next thing I installed on here for you guys is a Vita Homebrew Browser. Now this is something I haven't shown you guys in the past and there's another app on here that I didn't show you guys in the past, but I'm gonna explain it real quick. Vita Homebrew Browser is an app that you use to go into a marketplace of different homebrew applications. Now you can download game ports like Chocolate Dube, Quake, or Zelda or Mario, different versions of games that other developers have made for the Vita that are kind of like knockoff, let's say, or close to replica. I think there's even a Duke Nukem version inside that um, homebrew app. You can also get utilities, you can also get emulators, like Nintendo 64's newest emulator is on there as well, and it's actually doing a lot better. A lot of games are running much more responsively on the Vita, so yes, guys, you can play Nintendo 64 games with your PS Vita. It works. Now, some of them won't have the best frame rates on there. They will be choppy, they will be laggy, but to, you have to keep in mind that when you're, it's not very easy to emulate a system, even though Nintendo 64 is, you know, decades old at this point, it still isn't super, super easy to emulate on older hardware like this. Your PC would trash it completely or a MacBook would easily do it, but not on a Vita. So it's still good to see that we're getting some kind of progress in these landscapes. So for the OLED, that's pretty much the end of it. I have Auto Plugin, Adrenaline, Package, RetroArch, and Vita homebrew browser. That's all you need to pretty much go and start doing other things. Now there's a ton of other apps that you can download, other VPKs, but as a base package, this is the TSB special treatment I like to consider or call it. This is what I put on it when I send it back to you guys so that it's a base foundation for you to start and getting everything else. Now over to the slim ones. The slim ones I did a little bit of a different thing with. So one of you guys in one of my previous videos mentioned, actually I believe it was the video where I, I stated, which Vita should you buy? Should you go for the slim or should you go with the OLED? And I specifically said that I like the OLED only because the screen is very clear and vibrant. Now one of you guys pointed out that, hey, there's a app in there that you can go and touch the registry edit settings and you can make the colors more vibrant. And I'm gonna be following up on a video on this topic right after this one on how you can go ahead and do it because man, it makes a world of a difference. It is actually insanely much more better. So I don't know if that was grammatically correct or not, but it's awesome guys. Basically your screen looks fantastic. So it's never gonna look as good as the OLED. I mean, I'll be very honest with you guys, you know I'm very honest. So it's not gonna look as great as the OLED. That'll always be a different you know, a different factor between the two. But man, the resolution just becomes, well, resolution technically stays the same. The colors become much more vibrant and saturated and it just looks so much nicer. So as you scroll through the menu of it, especially if you have wallpapers, you're gonna notice it immediately. So I went in there, tweaked the settings for the display to make your screens look much more vibrant. Other than that, everything between the OLED models that you guys send me and this that you guys send me work fantastic and flawless. 
So that is what I've done with these Vitas. You guys should be pretty much content with what has been put on here. And it's, it's a great platform to begin on when you guys go ahead and start your modding adventures and your homebrew adventures. So hopefully this gives you guys everything you need to get started with your Vita modding adventures. Now, just a quick reminder guys, if you wanna send your Vita like these two gentlemen have sent theirs to me, make sure that if you want me to set up certain things on there that you send me all the things I need. So the first thing I need is, if you're gonna be sending me a fat one, make sure there's a PS Vita memory card with it. Otherwise I can't do anything with it. Also make sure if you wanna have an SD to Vita, you know, configured with it, send that. And you might as well send me all these things if you're gonna be sending me a Vita in the first place, take advantage of my service and let me do it all for you properly. So hopefully this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoy and you're, you know, you're well aware that I can do these services for you guys and help you guys out. I always love to help people out as much as I can. And I appreciate you guys returning the favor and helping me out on my channel. Remember guys, please hit that subscribe button. I'm really trying to get to 100,000 K or so, or 100,000 subscribers, shall I say and you know try and build this channel up more so a lot more people can get helped by my content and of course it encourages me to make more content for you oh last thing before i forget the other part of the royal tsv treatment is i went ahead and detailed all three of these vitas and made sure that they're super clean um two of them specifically mario you sent me dirty vitas dude especially with coronavirus you gotta be cleaner man and i went ahead in the extra mile and sanitized it so i'm not trying to call you out but hey I am taking care of stuff that you guys send me. I've always been an electronics fanatic in my life and I'll make sure that anyone who sends me their stuff will get it back cleaned as well. So hopefully you guys appreciate the extra things that I do to take care of you guys. And um, I appreciate you guys staying through to the end of this video and watching. And again, huge shout out to all the guys who support me and girls that support me and as well as Patreon supporters, guys. Appreciate it very much. Without you guys, I wouldn't be as far as I've made it. Um, and you know, these are tough times guys, so stay safe. Sorry to ramble on again. I like to talk on some of these things, but um, anyways, thank you very much for staying through to the end of this video and look out for my next video regarding the modification of the LCD screen or the, you know, the color vibrancy on it. And I'll show you a couple more things while I get to it. So thanks again for staying tuned to this video and I will catch you guys on my next one. Peace out.